Great. And with, uh, without any further questions from the uh, members, I'd like to say thank you very much, Secretary Laird, for all your hard work and uh, appreciate your testimony today. And I uh, would like to welcome up the next panel, uh, Ms. Packard and Mr. Wu. Thank you again for joining us. Ms. Packard, if you'd like to begin. Absolutely. Well, Chairs Levine and Pavley and members of the committees, thank you so much for holding this hearing. This is such an important, important topic uh, for the future of our state. So uh, Michael and I thought we would share some personal perspectives. Hopefully everyone's seen the commission's report and Secretary Lehrer did a, a great overview of it. Um, I think from, uh, from, from all accounts, I would say uh, you and we were very lucky to have such a great group of people work on this. I think everyone really put a lot of time and energy into it. And, you know, I think the first question one might ask is, how will this report be different? We've known about problems in our state parks for many years. The problems outlined here were not new. And um, we've all seen and maybe even participated in uh, citizen commissions that have made recommendations that have sat on the shelf, as, uh, as you mentioned. And I guess, uh, you know, my, my overarching, uh, you know, comment on that is I really believe that this uh, report is different and is going to get a lot of traction because it took the ideas and uh, went into depth at a level to actually create a very specific implementation plan. And um, I'm very pleased to see, I think all of us on the commission are very pleased to see the state resources agency's commitment to that and uh, commitment to having an actual work plan to get rolling on these recommendations. Now, of course, uh, the pace of their implementation and, and uh, seeing the vision outlined in this report actually actualized will be a many year process. And um, it's going to take uh, a lot of vigilance and, and a lot of hard work on the part of both those uh, within the agency and, and uh, supporters around the state and obviously um, all of you uh, in, in the room here today. But I guess uh, for me the most important part of the report that I would hope we all can keep our eye on is uh, the vision statement in there because as we all know, um, if you don't know where you're going, any path will get you there. And I think the vision articulated in the report is is really the most important piece that articulates a vision, a 25-year vision that establishes a goal for us to have the best state park system in the nation. I think as Californians, uh, being a native Californian myself, uh, that that's just a no-brainer. We absolutely should have the most successful, most well-funded, most um, amazing park system in the nation. And there are a lot of obvious reasons why. We have the most amazing nature in the United States. We have incredible resources to protect. Uh, we have uh, the leading universities in our state surrounding resource protection, <laughs> innovation, and science that, that informs the very challenging task of managing resources uh, in the face of global climate change and all of the issues and change, 38 million people in our state, the, the challenges that um, face resource managers today, we have the brain power to solve those problems. Uh, we have uh, an amazing bunch of philanthropic partners. I mean, when you think about it here, the, the foundations that funded this work, these are the largest environmental f funders in the nation. I mean, the companies that built the, that, the wealth here in Silicon Valley that, interestingly, have all decided that the environment is not their only priority, but it's one of their big priorities. That's an opportunity, and all of us here in the state uh, really should take advantage of that. And it's kind of up to us to interest them and come up with uh, ways that we can uh, use their funding to leverage success. So, you know, many of you, I'm sure, were involved in watching the great success of the implementation of the Marine Life Protection Act, something our state should be super proud of. And as someone that's worked on ocean resource policy nationally and internationally for for many years, I can say the state has established leadership nationally and beyond. I mean, people come from around the world to see what you all have achieved here with resource protection in state waters. So we need to continue 
continue the role, continue that idea um, here with, with our state park system. Well, so um, a few of the the key uh, the key points. I mean, I think uh, we we've, we've we've heard the outline of the transformation team and sort of this two-year implementation plan uh, to get rolling on the vision that is in here. I thought I would maybe highlight a couple of the areas, and then uh, Commissioner Wu will talk a bit about some of the things especially uh, important to him that he's been engaged with. I think for me, the really the most important underpinning here, but perhaps the part that is not the most exciting, is the whole idea of transforming the organization. And um, I was thinking about a good way to, to think about this, and you might think of it, uh, you can put gas in your car, but if your car's not running, you're not going to go anywhere. And I, we just cannot underscore um, enough the importance of making this in, in this, the investment in taking the time to get the state park system uh, organization itself to a better state. One of the, I think, most valuable things this commission did in terms of investing the funds that we had was to commission some outside consultant studies on things such as the whole, you know, what is the financial state of the state park system, and then also um, we did some very important market research, and I really hope that you'll access those documents. Those are there for you and everyone in the state enterprise to access in the long term. Uh, some very striking findings came out of out of the studies that we did, and as it regards to the financial state, as Secretary Laird mentioned, it was really, I have to say, I was just personally shocked at the lack of information, of kind of business information this state agency has in order to conduct its enterprise. If you were a business, for-profit or not-profit, I mean, you, you would be out of business, let's just say that. So it's really the, just the top priority to get the information, the financial systems, the financial planning information, uh, you know, where where is the money going? <laughs> Never mind where you want it to go, but there are just some very basic underpinnings that need to be attended to. Um, so that truly is topic one. Uh, looking at how to get the right team members, I mean, the key to any successful organization, you know, get the right people on the bus. You know, you've got to have opportunity, you've got to hire the right people, and you have the opportunity for promotion and leadership of, of the people that can really drive uh, drive success in your organization. And again, some of these recommended changes about, you know, who gets to be promoted, what is the path to leadership, uh, it's going to be, you know, it's going to take some work to, to get that right, but it's absolutely important because without the right people in leadership positions, again, you're not going to achieve that vision that we've set out. So uh, transformation team, you know, I hope it will get everyone's support, and I know that probably many of you are eager to, you know, get rolling on uh, the funding piece of this because I do agree with what's been said. You know, uh, state parks are a public resource. They're not going to be financially self-sufficient. They're going to require a diversified revenue stream. And again, looking at, uh, at, at the long-term funding model, uh, I, I believe strongly that that needs to be a diversified revenue stream, and I hope that everyone will remain open-minded about, you know, every revenue stream coming into the parks needs to grow. The public piece, uh, the philanthropic piece, and also the, um, the private partner piece. There's a way to have vendor partners with your mission-driven enterprise and have it work out just fine. Um, but it takes leadership. Again, you have to have guidelines, and we certainly know there's anxiety about, you know, expanding private partnerships. We, we need to figure that out, uh, and, and it's, it's, not, it's not an either-or. It's, it's an all-of-the-above. And then uh, I would say that, um, so the, the, the other part of the, of the report that I think is, is so important, and, and again, Commissioner Wu will pick up on this, is the part about access. I mean, one of the most striking findings, I guess it should be no surprise, uh, but the market research and audience research that we commissioned really underscored the fact that the people of California today are not accessing the park resources that we have and that we have created and protected and are making available, for, you know, with, with the intent for them to be using them. So uh, we need to attend tr to uh, all the issues surrounding that. 
where the parks are, more urban parks, what the amenities are in the parks that are the kinds of things and activities that will appeal to the people that live in California today and um, how people can get to the parks, where they stay when they're in the parks. All of that is important not only to uh, you know, ha having the parks used and, and um, making sure that, um, you know, they, they have a financial base. That, that's not really the idea. The idea is these parks exist as a resource for the people of California to enjoy. Taxpayer money is supporting them. Everyone should be able to have equal access and have a fabulous time in a nearby park, have a park nearby that they can go with their families. And this is not only important in the short term, but in the long term. These will be the constituents for environmental protection in our state uh, 50 years from now. And, and uh, this is something we really need to attend to. So I think um, that's uh, sort of an overview of the of, of, of my um, the highlights of this commission's work and my experience. I think it was uh, a great group of people, and I really encourage you to uh, and I, I thank you for your attention to the commission's uh, recommendations. And um, I think all of us are stand ready to be involved in the implementation. And I know the philanthropic partners, uh, one, of which, one of which I'm engaged with, is very eager to continue to help. Um, but not in an open checkbook kind of way. You know, we all need to hold each other accountable. We all have a part to play, and uh, I look forward to helping uh, any way I can. So thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much, Commissioner Packer. That's a great way to close your comments. Uh, Commissioner Wu. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Chairman, Madam Chairman, members of the committee, it's a great honor to be here this morning. Uh, I, I have to say at least some members of the Parks Forward Commission did not exactly know what they were getting themselves into when we agreed to serve on this commission. But I do have to say after about a year and a half or two years, it's been a very fulfilling, very gratifying experience to deal with the real-life challenges of this wonderful park system that we have in this state. Uh, you heard from Commissioner Packard about some of the overall directions recommended by the commission relating to management, relating to partnerships. I'd like to highlight in particular uh, something that I took a special interest in as a member of the commission. That is the challenge of expanding access to the state parks, especially if we think about the likelihood of the future need to provide park resources in areas where there aren't currently state parks. What are the barriers? What are the obstacles standing in the way of ensuring that California's state park system is relevant to California's future population? I'd like to highlight in particular three areas that I think we need to emphasize in thinking about how to expand and diversify the future constituency for state parks. That would be, number one, information and technology. Number two, transportation, and number three, innovation. First of all, relating to uh, information and technology, I don't know if the members of the committee have had the opportunity to check out the new app and website that has been created called Kali Parks, that's C-A-L-I-P-A-R-K-S dot org. Uh, this was designed as a new app which would provide access anywhere in the state of California if you wanted to find out where's the nearest state beach, where can I go camping in the mountains, or what resources are available. This is a new app that, it, that provides information to anybody, including information about wh when are the parks open, how much does it cost to get in, how do, what kind of transportation route can I take? So that's a big step forward, especially focusing on the information uh, demand from millennials and others who are very dependent on, cell, on smartphones or, or iPads or other devices. But that's an example of an innovative use of information to get information out there, not just about state parks, but also about local parks and national parks, because to many users, there's no difference. They don't see the difference between a city park, a state park, uh, or, or a national park. Um, second, I wanted to talk about transportation. This is something that was particularly interesting to me because my background is I'm an urban planner and I'm interested in how people get around to things. Um, many of the state parks in California are not located close to the major population centers. That doesn't mean you can't get there, but it requires some research or investigation to try to find out how to get there. Um, I live in the Silver Lake area of Los Angeles and I was talking to one of my neighbors who's the director of planning for the Metrolink train system because he's the father of some young kids and they like to 
to go to the parks on his own, he did some research and found that, that in Southern California, there actually are quite a few state parks that are relatively close to transit stations. But if you don't do that research and, or if you don't know how to find that information, it may be hard to figure that out. So I think finding ways to get people to the parks, whether it's by public transit or other means, is something that we really need to concentrate on. Um, I, I spoke to the general manager of Zipcar in Southern California who said they would be willing to consider offering a discounted rate for people who wanted to rent one of their you know, car rentals by the hour. Who, In other words, you don't have to have a car to be able to get to a state park if we could work something like that out. So it, it could be that there are many interesting innovations possible relating to transportation. I also wanted to include one story relating to transportation uh, that was told to me by Amy Lethbridge, the Deputy Director of the Mountains and uh, Recreation Conservation Authority, who has spent a lot of her time working on, on, on transportation issues. She told me a true story about one time renting a school bus to bring inner city parents and their kids to, uh, to a recreational area in the Santa Monica Mountains. And then, because of the lack of, of education, that is environmental education resources, the lack of good signage, a lot of the parents who took the bus to get up there never went beyond the parking lot. Because, in other words, just transportation by itself may not be enough either if we're not providing the information about what do you do after you get to the parking lot. Uh, the third theme I wanted to emphasize was innovation, and I'd like to ask the sergeant to pass this out to the members of the committee, or, or someone. Um, Lance Kahn, the chair of the commission, came up with the idea that if we want to encourage more people to think about camping in state parks, we, we need to provide camping facilities that are more creative, more, more innovative. And because I'm dean of a college at Cal Poly Pomona that includes a department of architecture, he asked me if we had some faculty or students who might like to design cabins that could be available in state parks. So uh, with support from the Resources Legacy Fund, we were able to get an architecture class taught last spring with about 15 graduates graduate students who came up with very innovative designs for state parks. The one you see on the cover actually was built into a model, which temporarily is sitting outside my office. But it's already been to the state fair. It's already been to the LA County Fair. People have been walking up saying, how can I buy one of these right now from my backyard? It's, but it's not intended for people's backyards. And what we hope is that by working with the California Department of Parks and Recreation, that these cabins could be, made of, could be mass produced and made available for camping at a reasonable cost in the state parks. So that's an example of an innovative look in this, in this case, looking at camping and trying to figure out what else could we do in terms of broadening, uh, expanding, and diversifying the future audience for state parks. Given the likelihood that we want taxpayers and voters to support future bonds that might provide more resources for the system, we need to demonstrate how the system can be made accessible, appealing, and attractive to a diverse audience within the state. And so uh, that's what I wanted to bring to you today in terms of some examples of innovation, information, and transportation that would achieve our goals of expanding and diversifying the constituency for state parks. Thank you very much for your presentations. I'd like to ask members if there are any questions at this time. Mr. Mani. Well, thank you, Mr. Chair. And I want to thank both of you for your service on the commission and my constituent, Ms. Packard. Uh, particularly appreciate the nexus, the work of the Monterey Bay Aquarium in ocean health and sustainability and the clear nexus between the health of our oceans, the health of our coastal environment in our state environment. I think underlying all of our discussion of the important role the parks play um, for our ecosystems and our communities, it's often implicit, but I think we need to make it more explicit, is the clear nexus with public health. And that our parks, and it is contained in the report, it's recognized, uh, provide a nexus between communities and not only better appreciation and awareness of our natural environments, but of our public health. And uh, also greatly appreciate the conscious recognition that to expand access to our parks, it's more than just 
uh, an innovative design on a website, that we have to take the extra steps to reach out and into communities that haven't previously accessed the parks. Again, I'm aware of the work of the Monterey Bay Aquarium in expanding its um, uh, uh, constituent base, uh, those who have learned by coming to the aquarium and engaging in the teaching programs. It hasn't happened by happenstance, by just putting it on a website. It's been arranging for the transportation, working with the schools, uh, and I would hope there could be some lessons learned. Um, Commissioner Packard, from your experience uh, in that nonprofit scientific marine sector that could also help in making success outreach to communities to access the state parks. It seems like there could be a lot learned and, and, and drawn from that. But really just to thank you both, and as I think everybody has said, including Secretary Laird, uh, the original request to serve as commissioners maybe did not come with full disclosure of uh, what was going to be asked of you, but we sure appreciate what you've stepped up to do and, and what sounds like a clear commitment to continue um, helping the state get it right for the benefit of the people and for the public health of the people of California. So thank you. Mr. Ridley Thomas. Yes, I want to thank our uh, commissioners, uh, certainly Commissioner Wu. Uh, we appreciate your leadership in making sure that Los Angeles had a good seat at the table. And for those who may or may not realize, uh, Commissioner Wu is a trailblazing leader in Los Angeles, led of the Silver Lake area on the Los Angeles City Council for many years, uh, a decade or so ago. Um, from your perspective and looking at the entire system, how and Commissioner Packard, you may uh, be able to opine on this as well. How do we uh, engage and get surgical for Southern California with respect to our parks and parks infrastructure? Uh, my observation is the way that we sell parks in portions of Southern California and Los Angeles uh, is certainly green space, uh, public health access, as was mentioned by my colleague in the Senate, but green infrastructure, a part of the green collar economy and tangible expression of green jobs. Um, are there um, things that we can do to expedite uh, that, to bring resources to the fore, to look at what we're doing with our water infrastructure and seismic activity uh, ideas? Um, you all both are aware that the governor's five-year infrastructure plan acknowledges some of the deferred maintenance backlog uh, in our park system. Uh, thoughts and uh, ideas on that from either of you? Um, thank you, Mr. Ridley Thomas. Uh, uh, I think that if the state makes a commitment to providing and upgrading the infrastructure that the state park system needs, then there would be naturally a lot of real opportunities for providing opportunities to further green the state parks and I think potentially to create opportunities, especially for minority owned companies to get involved in doing that kind of infrastructure work as well as I think educating the, pup, the, the constituency for state parks about the need even in a park setting to address issues like water for example, in a sustainable way. Uh, I think, uh, as you probably know, uh, urban residents frequently take natural resources like water for granted, or they assume it comes out of the tap and they don't really know where it comes from. So I think that if there are major infrastructure programs, it ought to be done in a way that educates the users of the parks about where these resources actually are coming from and about decisions that the state could be making uh, that would do this in a more sustainable way. I guess I would comment. I'm I'm not um, obviously very familiar with uh, Southern California, LA basin infrastructure issues, but um, something that really came home to us in our work was was the idea that we were we were impaneled to work on recommendations for the state park system. But really, uh, the state has a network of parks that range across all kinds of jurisdictions. And from a public perspective, uh, we, we think it should be approached in, in terms of getting people to the parks in, in sort of an agnostic way. You know, what's your closest park? And so I think an interesting challenge, which again, we, we didn't get into in any, any detail, but it's really maybe not a challenge, an opportunity, 
is to work across these jurisdictions and think about, you know, what is the picture for access across all the jurisdictions and how can we network the parks up? Certainly, um, you have the whole LA River Restoration Initiative. I mean, there are a lot of people working on related, um, uh, you know, topics, obviously, water recapture, non-point source runoff, you know, there's, there's all these things going on um, in the area that I think, uh, you know, State parks are part of that picture, and I would encourage everyone to, you know, look at pe putting some of the pieces together in a way that's not just focusing on on state parks and the green infrastructure. As you say, that's a piece of it, and some of the funders um, that you know fund environmental initiatives in the state, you know, that they, they get it. I mean, uh, the most of our state lives south of the L.A. County line, right. so the whole the needs for those. Philanthropy is interested in working on "quote unquote" environmental issues and needs in California. It, it's a completely different picture of, of what those needs are and what the issues are that should be worked on than it was 50 years ago. And um, I'd encourage people to have the you know w with ideas and innovations to bring them forward because um, that's that's what it's all about. Thank you, Commissioner. A second question, Mr. Chairman. Um, you talked uh, in your opening remarks, um, uh, uh, Commissioner Packard, about kind of a quarter century plan and a, a look that, the, mm -hmm. that, that you and the commission were taking in various stakeholders. I wonder if the commission considered what uh, a system similar to Sunset Review might be for state parks, uh, and not necessarily a 25-year plan, but uh, seven to ten year increments. Um, different state governments ac across the country use sunset review differently. Sometimes the department will sunset unless it is specifically reauthorized and you have a hearing and you look at all the divisions and you hear public testimony mm -hmm. and they have to come and kind of justify uh, their budget. There are conversations in, in, in this legislature, in this current session, about zero based budgeting. So you got to come back and argue for your budget, build it back up. Uh, from the bottom up, it's kind of a, it, it, it might allow for a grassroots process and the like. Do either of you uh, uh, have opinions on on, on such uh, an idea or had you heard any conversation about that in terms of the, 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 the intermediate uh, uh, term uh, and what we might hope to see in adopting your recommendations? We didn't talk specifically about mechanisms such as sunset review. So the answer to that is no. I think we certainly did talk about zero-based budgeting and just the whole idea of the state park budget. It needs to be looked at ground up. But how the state chooses to, you know, implement periodic reviews, um, you know, within the agency or by the legislature, we didn't, we didn't get to that point. Uh, Mr. Ridley Thomas, I'd like to respond uh, not so much about about sunset review, but more. Uh, uh, I think it's been clear to the members of the Parks Forward Commission, one of the big challenges facing this department and the state park system has been the unpredictability and the volatility of funding. I think the numbers are that there's been fluctuation from about uh, 89, a budget of $89 million to a budget of 100, 125 or $129 million within just a few years. And so uh, even though one may criticize management for various reasons, but it's really hard to manage in a rational way when the numbers jump back and forth so much. So while I think it's legitimate to question uh, lines in a budget, but I, I think it would be very, very helpful to be able to, to provide so, a greater level of predictability in terms of the financial resources coming to the state park system. All right. I, I love hearing about, you know, let's get an app, let's do this, let's move forward. Um, I think the cabin idea is phenomenal. Would love to see it. Um, I was a Boy Scout growing up, spent many times in the parks. Um, my question is, is, what is the plan to deal with the environmental impacts that we increasingly hit while moving forward and adding access to the parks? I think we definitely don't want to trample upon the uh, precious resources and that uh, at the same time that we want to expand the constituency for parks, it needs to be done in a way, uh, if, even if that includes regulating the number of visitors or restricting some activities in areas where, where uh, landscaping or, or demand on water resources might 
might outstretch what we can actually do responsibly. So I, I think keeping in mind the need to protect the resources is very important while at the same time we try to expand access to the park.